Hello everybody, it's Patricia Warby here and it's week six, week six of my microdosing journey. Um, I could carry on, I have plenty more of the little tablets here, uh, which just look like supplements, because in fact, pretty similar. Um, <clears throat> each little capsule contains a tiny amount of the bark, which you take. Um, I've got two more to take now on this session because I've decided to stop at week six. Um, and that's because I think I've achieved what I wanted from it. It doesn't mean I will never do another series because I think I probably will. Um, but it feels like the appropriate moment to sort of summarize where I am and what's happened in the six weeks since I started. And I think you can trace that journey through the, the videos, which I've linked in the description below. Um, from a wintry kind of experiment that began, I guess, at the beginning of May uh, or end of April, um, still very cold, very windy here. Um, these things do impact how you feel. And it felt like a good time to kind of investigate what might be going on and just to remind you uh iboga is a, a plant medicine that allows kind of you to connect in a different way with your body and your mind and my my initial thought was i'd like to deal with my anxiety um because anxiety has always been a constant for me it's just it's just the background to who i am it's it's i don't particularly look anxious i perhaps don't sound anxious but when things trigger me um, it might be just someone pulling out ahead of me if I'm driving very really suddenly or there's a loud noise, then I realise actually my nervous system is quite highly attuned and I'm not going to be able to change that because I'm a highly sensitive person. But I can do things which take away some of the stress burden that might be contributing to that. And that's that was my original idea was that I would deal with the anxiety. Uh, and of course, it being a plant medicine, it shows you deeper truths and you, the direction you go in isn't the one you initially thought you would you would do. Um, and, and just to remind you what happened in the first few weeks was I had a massive detox reaction. Um, just everything, just oh, I was feeling really ill for a while and my stomach was gurgling and uh, yeah, I had all, all sorts of awful gut symptoms and everything just it cleared me out you know um which was unexpected because i hadn't realized particularly that i was holding on to so much but clearly my body was and um the final few weeks have been more about the mental component of that because once my body had cleared out things did get a lot more uh, simple a lot a lot of um, clarity came in and one of the surprising things was that my dreams got really intense and one I haven't reported to you, which happened just after I recorded week five video. Uh, I think it happened Monday night after I'd recorded last week's video was I had the first flying dream. I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but maybe some of you will. A uh, flying dream. I haven't had that for a long time. I mean, many years. And it was semi lucid as well. So let me explain what I mean by that. OK, dreams are obviously expressions of your subconscious. They're things that maybe you're repressing, things that you haven't resolved, uh, people and situations that have caused you pain or, or have challenged you in some way. Um, and I've had a few dreams about relationships and ones that didn't work out and friendships where I felt betrayed and and so on. But this was a very well, it started off like that kind of a dream. And I was in a situation uh, from a, a long, a long time ago now, about 20 years ago, where I had been really hurt. And I'm in that situation. And in the dream, I say to myself, oh, no, not this again. Like, I'm aware that I'm being presented with this, and I'm in a dream. And then I say to myself, what do I need to learn from this? Because in other words, I don't want to be in this situation again. I want to take what I learned from that and transcend it. Okay. And 
at that moment when I ask that question, what do I need to learn from this? I start to rise up in my dream. Uh, and this was always the way for me when, when I had a flying dream, I wouldn't just suddenly be flying. I would be on the ground and then I would start to levitate. And um, in my best flying dreams, it was the most amazing thing that I could do. And I actually used to wake up and think I could still do it when I was a kid. And of course, I can't levitate, sadly, but I would keep trying because it was so wonderful. So in this dream, I start to levitate and I think, ah, OK, I'm going to see a bigger view of this. I'm going to actually see it from above. And then I am literally taken up into the sky and I start to fly as a, as a human, just myself and my body. And I'm flying along a coastline. And it seems to be somewhere that I, I've never been. It's somewhere Middle Eastern, possibly Turkey. I've never been, or have, I don't think I've been to Turkey. I don't remember, but I think I haven't. Uh, somewhere Muslim. It felt, uh, because I could see minarets, and I could see bearded men and these long robes and and gold. There was lots of gold sort of uh, covering the buildings and there were rocky out, outposts on, on the islands, you know, little buildings that were everywhere. And it was blue sky, blue sea. Um, and I'm flying along and I'm seeing all this incredible detail of the people and the place and I'm memorizing it. It's like... I need to remember this because it's beautiful. And, and so in my dream, there's a sense of appreciation of beauty as well. And that, I don't know, then I woke up and then I was like, oh my God, I've got to write that one down. Um, I didn't actually write it down in the end because I actually remembered everything. And that's the wonder of, of some of these tools is that they allow you to remember your dreams in a way that perhaps you wouldn't if you weren't accessing deeper parts of yourself and so you hold on to the feeling of the dream which is that I am more than my body that I have a bigger view of life and that it could be that I need to see myself as more than this person going through this physical life and appreciate the diversity and the 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 wonder of living um I didn't solve the issue with the previous relationship or being hurt, but I felt released. I did feel released, like it didn't matter anymore. And, and that is a beautiful kind of bookend to my journey because that was the first feeling I had when I took some of the aboga in week one was a, a normal situation would normally send me into a tailspin. Just, I had this message in my body that said, it doesn't matter. You know, it's not that important. And so the beginning and the end of my journey have been very, very similar. And the other thing I, I reported last week, um, but I wanted to just mention again, was um, the weight loss, which has been really welcome, actually, because uh, over time, one tends to put weight on, particularly when you're a middle aged woman, and particularly when you've got a low thyroid, which I have um, low thyroid thyroid is about your metabolism and if your metabolism isn't working at full stretch you're, you're just going to put weight on gradually over time and that that had been what had happened to me and I you know I do have a bit of a craving for chocolate so it's you know I have a bit of a sweet tooth I'll be honest so um that I haven't changed my diet I haven't restricted anything wonderful haven't had to restrict anything and yet the weight has just uh fallen off and uh I'm not yet down to my ideal weight, but I'm I'm on the way. So which will be wonderful. Um, what else has happened? My skin has cleared. Um, I used to have these little irritated red patches around my nose and sometimes on my forehead as well, which is all related to the gut, by the way. Um, uh, and they've gone completely. Um, I don't think I fixed everything. All right. I still probably got low thyroid because I've got ridged nails and that's a very common sign. Um, but everything is sort of picking up gradually. And that's what natural healing is all about. It's not about uh, taking a pill to repress the symptom. It's about finding out what's underneath the symptoms. What are you holding on to that you need to let go of? And that that's been the journey. And so 
my personal experience has been very positive, but I would say you need to go into it expecting the unexpected because nothing went the way I thought it would. Um, I expected to feel calm and zen-like, and it wasn't like that. It was quite tumultuous, actually, and there were some periods where I was really up and down and feeling quite sick, as I've said. So um, be aware that the journey is an individual one. Your experience may be very different from mine, but I just wanted to share what it was like for an, uh, you know, an older woman <laughs> um, who feels very young um going through this rather than you know a 20 something because that's a very different time of your life and your metabolism is going to be very different and if you're male to female it's very different but i i would say to anyone considering this um it's it's a very powerful thing to do well and but get advice and you know do it if 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 it speaks to you uh my next journey will be um with something else uh, which I'll announce um, probably in a few weeks time and it's going to be something fungal let's say um, so I, I'm looking forward to that very much because that was my original idea uh, psilocybin which is the active ingredient is is a very interesting brain kind of alter altering chemical um, I, I'm just expecting it to be very, very different. But I have, other than that, I have no idea. And I'm not gonna go straight into that. I really think you need time to metabolize what, what you're doing. This process of healing is, is very much like living. You can't just run into it with a goal. You, you have to allow it to, to kind of settle. And so that's what I'm doing. So, I look forward to updating you on that. And if anybody wants to ask me anything about the journey I've been on and um, <clears throat> what I've learned, you know, I always reply to comments provided they are uh, decent comments and not, you know, defamatory or uh, somewhat rude. So please take care of yourselves and get in touch if you'd like to. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.